this is Rosa RCG Creations bringing you a little tip on how to make your own brown sugar. All I'm using is bow, molasses, whatever sugar brand you want to buy. And I just buy based on what's in the store at the cheapest price. And then here's my little sugar container. I got these, uh, I think I believe I got these at the container store many, many years ago. But I'm running low on sugar. The brown sugar, and then I have a little scoop. Also, I got these at the container store. And I use those little ceramic, um, these little ceramic ones. They're different shapes. But you get them, you put them in a bowl of water. You let them soak for about five, maybe like ten minutes. So they get really soaked. And then you take it out, you dry it, and then you drop it in your sugar. And it keeps your sugar, your brown sugar from getting hard and then you know after a while it just you know it just depends on how long you how often you use your sugar and stuff but it does stick you know but that's okay I just scrape it off I used to get a knife or sometimes just like I'm doing right now I'm just using my fingers and then it comes right off then I dip that in the bowl of water but today's video is about how to make your own brown sugar and you want to change and water your little ceramic dishes, little those little dish, those little round disc things, every three months to keep your sugar moist. But as you can see, it's still pretty moist. You know, I just had to stir it up a little bit and stuff. But I'm gonna grab another container, put this in because I like to re uh, recycle my sugar so I use my old stuff first and the newer stuff last so I'll be right back I'm gonna put this in another container make some more and put it in here I'll be right back okay I'm back I wanted to show you excuse my best back here uh, today is my prep day <laughs> There's so many things I'm out of stock on. I have to reload, repack. So I want to concentrate today on repacking my items. And I like to put all my like my stuff of boxes of like salt, cornstarch, stuff like that that I get from the grocery store and put them in jars and, see, and vacuum pack them and seal them. That way they'll last a little longer because sometimes, you know, if it's a good price, I'll buy in bulk. But since we're just empty nesters, I don't overly buy. But for us, because we're not overly big bakers. Uh, but I like to be able to have all that on hand and I know if I vacuum pack it it's gonna last a lot longer but anyway so that's what I'm gonna be doing today so excuse this mess back here all that stuff that I want to prepare and get done today so anyway here's those little ceramic they're sitting in a bowl of water I'm gonna have just it just come right off there's with this one I liked it because it looked like a little a uh, little um, little teddy bear with his little bow and this one is a little rooster and they're just ceramic I don't know exactly what all they're made out of I don't know if it's the same thing as those clay pot, pot, uh, those clay pots I'm not really for sure but anyway and that's what they look like and then here's my little rooster and I like to keep them both in here just because this is such a big container now I wanted to show you this I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this in the camera but I'm gonna show it to you upside down this dark spot, all that is, is the molasses that just, throughout, without, with time, it just stuck down here to the bottom of it. Uh, it didn't mean you didn't mix it well, which you probably did mix it well. It's just, it's just, just the, the, the nature of the beast of this is what happens sometimes. It's not a big issue. Now, once a year, uh, me, because this is a rubber seal here, and this is a snap tight lid, and this is called snapware. Hope you can see that, but this is a good, this is a good 10 years old. And all I've ever done with this is keep sugar in it. I keep one for flour, one for pancake mix, and that's another rest, that's another video I'm going to show you is how to make my own, uh, make my own pancake mix. That way it's already ready. All i got to do is add egg and milk and oil and we're done. But it's all set. And because uh, hubby and I do love to eat pancakes. <laughs> we eat those a lot. And anyway, but I like it because it's got the little grip handles right here. I'm little, so I've got a small hand. I have a size 5 ring is what I wear. So this is a good grip for me. And when this whole thing is full, I still have a good grip when I pick it up out of the pantry. So anyway, let's get straight to the video here. 
So all you do is get your sugar. Get your bowl. And I like to use a bowl that's got a little spout. Just because I want to be able to pour that and not get another container dirty. Then I have to wash it. Then I've got to dry it. Then i got to put it away. That's just more work. So the less work, the better on certain things. And make sure you always start with a cl clean uh, utensils, tabletop, and I have wiped everything down. Uh, these are straight from the pantry. They just got washed last night. And then you just pour your sugar in your container. And you can do it in big batches like this, or you can do it a little bit at a time. I've been doing this for years, so I'm okay with it. I'm fine. And then I'm gonna, you just, I just go by look. I don't go by measurements. I know there's probably some recipes out there that do. I just go by look. But you know, I'm going to be honest with you. This is a little too big. So I'm going to pour some of this sugar in this other one with the residue the brown sugar is in. Just to make it easy for me to stir for the sake of the video. So let me just pour some of this out here, and then I'll make another batch off camera. Okay, then I'm just going to pour the molasses. Use whatever molasses you have, whatever you have on stock. And uh, I just like to turn it so I'm not dripping any molasses when it goes back into the jar. And look, it's drip free. There's no dripping all the way around the lip. That's another quick little tip. Okay, then all you're going to do is stir. I just turn the sugar over on the molasses. And then you just mix and mix and mix and mix. And that is really basically all it is. And you just continue mixing. And I was right, it's a lot easier to do it in a smaller quantity, so keep that in mind when you're first doing it, especially if you're a first time user doing this. It just makes it your, it's going to make your life and it's going to make your wrist <laughs> a lot better when you're doing it in smaller batches. And it really doesn't take that much time. And you're just mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing until it's all incorporated and pretty much all the molasses, the clumps of all the molasses. See that? You can see the clumps there. See there's some clumps right there. You see that? Sorry, I don't have a double video, so I, a double camera, so I can't see what I'm doing here. I'm just hoping I'm in frame. Okay, and continue just stirring and stirring and stirring. So I want to continue doing that, and I'll bring you right back when I'm totally done with that, okay? Okay, I'm bringing a little bit different view here. Uh, here, you can see where I'm mixing it. I've already put in my first batch in the container. Now I'm doing my second batch. But one thing I'm going to bring to your attention, if you want a light brown sugar, then you don't put as much molasses. If you want a dark brown sugar, then you put more molasses in. And that's basically the only two differences between light and dark. Um... And then you just continue to mix. But I wanted to show you as you're mixing, you scoop all the way from the bottom. See how the bottom of it shows got some sugar there? And then you just stir it around again until it all mixes up and gets mixed together. When you see any clumps, like, let me show you right here. See this clump of uh, molasses right there? There's a clump. Here's let me get this out of the way. Here's another clump right here. I hope you can see that. Which is, for me, I found that it's easy to just bring the clumps up, hold them one hand, and then spread your spoon on the inside of the bowl, and that crumbles up the clump and it dissolves. It doesn't really dissolve. It just mixes in with the sugar. And basically all I'm doing is, hope you can see that, I'm just applying pressure with the bowl on the back of the spoon onto the clump of molasses. And that's how I get rid of the clumps.
then again dig from the bottom and mix dig from the bottom here well here's a good nice big clump right here let me show you let me get my fork and see that's a nice big clump so I'm just going to bring it over to the side of the bowl and then spread it out you spread it with a little bit of sugar and then it incorporates in with the sugar and there you go and you see how there's two different colors one's a little bit darker than the other one because that's where there's more molasses and you can continue to mix it more or if you want a darker color again just add more molasses if that's what you would like to do so just continue to mix and then basically what I'm doing now is I'm just looking for any clumps to see if I find any clumps anywhere. If I do, I'm going to go ahead and get those incorporated in with the sugar. Pretty much this is all I'm doing. So let me bring you back when I'm at the next phase, which more than likely would be the ending part, and then we'll show you what we do next. Okay, I'm back. So since I've got about a half my jar filled, I'm going to take one of these little ceramic things. It was soaking in water. Just going to dry it off because this is sugar, so you want to dry it off. Get in all the little grooves. still moist but it's at least the outside surface is dry. Get the back and then I'm just going to lay it actually I'm going to put it inside in the center here. Push it all the way down. Okay. Now I'm going to get the rest of my mix. And I did do it in two bowls because I'm sorry but my arm was getting tired. <laughs> You want to work kind of fast because the more air that you expose the sugar to, it gets hard. So you want to work fast, not overly fast, but you don't want to be a slow turtle either. And look, it's all done. There's a couple of, you'll see a couple of flakes where the molasses didn't mix. Just stir it up, mix it up till you want to get almost every single crumble of molasses totally mixed up. Okay. Okay. Now let me put the rest of this in here. Let me turn this around. Get this other jar, this other container, excuse me, not jar. Pour that in there. I'm just going to make it smooth it out, make it a little bit even. You don't really have to, you just pour it in. But as you can see, I have extra. I'm going to put this in a mason jar, and I'm going to vacuum pack it so it'll last longer. Then when this runs a little bit low, I'll just refill it with my mason jar, but it's already made. But most of the time, I try to stick where it all fits in here, and I don't need an extra one, but because I made it before it was... Normally, I wait until it's totally, totally empty, but... This is the Christmas season, and I'm going to be probably be making some cookies for the holidays, so I want to make sure I have plenty of brown sugar on hand and not have to be in, stop in the middle of it and make a batch. So that's why I'm making extra. Oh, I got to excuse my reach here. I got to make sure you leave room for your scooper. So push it in all the way. And I think that I think that's good. I don't need to overfill it. 
And then I did wash my table and it was clean and sanitized. So I'm just going to put my little extra scoops of sugar that I spilled on the table and put it back in my bowl. And since since I um, need to put it in a mason jar, I'm going to come right back and then I'll show you the finishing product. Okay, great. Okay, here I am. I finished up this other batch. I went ahead and put my molasses bottle upside down. I ended up getting about that much and letting it sit the whole time I was processing all this sugar. And it filled up to about right there. Oops, I'm not in focus, sorry. And it filled up to about right there. So I filled it up and I made this a little bit darker. So I wanted to show you. Let me move this out of the way. It's just a little bit darker, not much. So this is going to be my dark sugar. That other one's going to be my light sugar. And then I'm just using my um, canning funnel to pour it in. I've got a couple of the molasses balls. And as I see them, I'll smooth this out before I put it in my jar. I just noticed I see some in there. Let me see if I can get it in there. Yep. Normally I would use a wide mouth quart jar, but I'm running low on those. And there's still a lot of areas that are price gouging the jars right now because of this hot, uh, economy the way it is right now. So I'm just going to use this because you can see I've got this little spoon. So it fits perfect in here. And I'll probably end up, this is my favorite spoon anyway. So I probably will use this when I need to get into this sugar. And I don't have any more of those little clay discs, so I put it on my list, on my grocery list, to buy some more. But until then, I'm, so I'm sure within time this will get a little hard. Those clay discs, when you get those, when you wet them, and dry them, pat it dry and then put it in your sugar, they'll last about three months. So mark your calendar to clean those out and change them every three months. And all you do is just take them back out of the sugar container. Soak them in water for about 10-15 minutes. Pat, try them, pat them dry. Pat, pat them dry. Sorry about that. And then put them back in your container. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm just gonna fill out the rest of this. I'm hoping I can get all this in one jar. I don't want to have two jars, but I brought two just in case. Oop, see some more clumps here. Just going to get those clumps out. Oop, see another clump. A little clumps I'm okay with. The big ones are the ones that I have a problem with because that's a bunch of molasses that's in your, depending on your recipes may make a difference, it may not. So the, the little tiny ones are okay. It's the great big ones that you definitely want to clump, smooth out the big clumps. Especially if you're making cookies. It's, you know, this sounds kind of good. It's like, I have another bottle that's molasses. Um, Mary's Nest, I watch her videos a lot. I really enjoy her stuff. And um, she has a, recipe, uh, a video she put on a couple of weeks ago called Molasses Cookies. Check that out. Her name is Mary, M-A-R-Y, apostrophe S, Mary's Nest, just the name of her channel. She also has a blog, but everything's on her channel. Okay, so let me, gonna just shake this out. Oh man, it's like I'm gonna have to, may have to use two jars. I was hoping not to, but if I can get it and clump it, press it down, I may be able to get it all in one jar. And don't forget, label your jars with what the product is, and at least the month and year. Some people do dates. Some some things I do dates because it makes a difference, and some things, most of the stuff I don't, I just do the month. But if I'm doing like a meal uh, with other things in it, like something like with rice, 
uh, I will definitely put the month, day, and year on there just so I know. For one thing, I don't want to eat like a say burrito or something like that and have it the rice be all mushy. So that will tell me to eat those first before I do like a can of chili or a jar of spaghetti sauce. You know, that can wait, cause that'll wait a good year, year and a half before I want to use it up. But anything to do with rice, I personally don't think I would do anything with, eat anything with mist in a mason jar with rice after three months, because I'm sure that rice has gotten soggy and mushy. I could be wrong, because I'm going to be honest with you, I've never really done it that long, so I don't know. I'm just going by sitting in the water, the liquid in the container. And right now I'm just scraping the last part because there's just enough for one scoop left, which is going to fill this jar up. And then let me get my fork here. And all I'm doing is getting the last little batches, because all this is good stuff. You don't want to waste any of it, especially if it's big clumps like this, because it'll get soft again. You know, just put a little ceramic, put a little ceramic um, clay disc in here, and then that'll bring the moisture right back in. too shabby for a little bit of spill. So there's that. By mistake, I ordered these off of Amazon, I mean off of eBay, thinking they were ball. Because I only prefer, I prefer to only use ball or curl lids. And I mis mistakenly clicked on the wrong one. And these are the known brand ones. And the box came in and they're made from China. So I don't really know how well these are going to seal. So I'm not going to use these at all. I'm not going to even take a risk on it for any pressure candy, but I will save these for vacuum packing. Uh, take wiped off your little rim just to make sure there's no sugar or nothing on it. And then put your seal, do it really tight. Again, I don't have a clay disc in here, so make sure it's really tight. You want to get all the air out. And there, and then what I'm going to do with my other disc I had that little teddy bear sitting here in my water. I'm going to dry it really well. Get that excess moisture off, all the little grooves here and on the sides. So there's my little teddy bear. And I'm going to put him right here on top. Just push him down just a tad. And now I've got two containers in here, so this whole thing will last a good three months and it'll be really loose and not clumpy or anything because of those two clay discs. This one doesn't have it, but I'm going to vacuum pack that one, so we're okay, good to go. Then I'm going to label this one. This is going to go back in my everyday pantry, which I know is my sugar. Oh, look, there's a piece of molasses one right there, but that's okay because it's going to be soft, so when I take it out, I'll just mush it with my spoon and it'll uh, soften back up again and mix up with my sugar. But there is my uh, show sample of how to make your own homemade brown sugar. You use regular uh, sugar and I personally like this molasses. This is made from Baker, uh, Baker's Corners. This is, I just, I've tried some other brands and it's got a funky little taste to it so my personal preference is just this but you know if you can, if you buy them, in, if they sell them in the smaller bottles, buy a smaller bottle. That way you can try it out and you just have a smaller portion uh, to see if you like it. But pretty much molasses is pretty much the same. Uh, this one says it takes 60 calories per one tablespoon. So that on the sugar is like, whoa. But then you know what? When you're making anything with brown sugar, <laughs> you don't count your calories when you're eating something like that. <laughs> oh, and this is say this is gluten-free and lactose-free. And thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.